All praises, all praises, all praises to the heavenly, holy, almighty creator of infinity, eternity, the universe, and all there is. This is revelations.unveiled.detroit. Hello, family. We are back together again in our wonderful consensual assembly as we step up to the threshold of transition. And now we are in our wonderful convening to this heavenly holy congregation and convocation where we will once again sit at the knee of wisdom and sip at the wine of the divine holy history of the hidden nation. Into the 12 tribes scattered abroad, wherever you may sojourn on the planet Earth, as well as my brothers and sisters of the world, my continuous petitions and prayer for your care and safety, your peace and harmony. And family, we are back together again where we have exposed our cranial universes and we are ready to receive as we perceive and believe the continuation of the holy history of the nation of the holy power of all imagination all praises and so we are here to continue with the series of first maccabees and we will be in the third chapter at this time but we were introduced to the maccabean brothers in the previous channel where they are standing as a vanguard for the law, the tradition and the heritage of the nation of Israel as they are immersed within the wickedness of the Greek captivity. And Antiochus Epiphanes is ruling at this time over the region and the sanctuary has been defiled and many of the brother and sister of the 12 tribes have been killed. And so we shall continue with our recognition and review of this wonderful holy history. And we begin. First Maccabees chapter three. Then his son Judas called Maccabeus rose up in his stead and all his brethren helped him and so did all they that held with his father and they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel so he got his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girt his warlike harness about him and made battles protecting the host with his sword all right brother Judas so Brother Judas is standing out now as a premier warrior for the nation. Verse four, in his acts, he was like a lion and like a lion's whelp roaring upon his prey. For he pursued the wicked and sought them out and burnt up those that vexed his people. Wherefore the wicked shrunk in fear of him and all the workers of iniquity were troubled because salvation prospered in his hand he grieved also many kings and made Jacob glad with his axe and his memorial is blessed forever moreover he went through the cities of Judah destroying the ungodly out of them and turning away the wrath from Israel so that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Then Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together and a great host out of Samaria to fight against Israel, which when Judas perceived, he went forth to meet him. So he smote him and slew him. Many also fell down slain, but the rest fled. Wherefore Judas took their spoils, and Apollonius' sword also, and therewith he fought all his life long. Now, when Saren, a prince of the army of Syria, 
heard say that Judas had gathered unto him a multitude and company of the faithful to go out with him to war. He said, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom for I will go fight with Judas and them that are with him who despise the king's commandments. All right, fellow uh, family. So we have a young gentleman, Sharon, want to come up and test the might and fortitude of brother Judas. So he made him ready to go up. And there went with him a mighty host of the ungodly to help him and to be avenged of the children of Israel. And when he came near to the group up of Beth Horon, Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. Verse 17, who, when they saw the host coming out to me and said to Judas, how shall we be able being so few to fight against so great a multitude and so strong seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all day unto whom Judas answered it is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few and with the God of heaven it is all one to deliver a great multitude or a small company for the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of an host but the strength comes from heaven they come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us and our wives and children and to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and our laws. Wherefore the Lord himself will overthrow them before our face. And as for you, be you not afraid of them. Now, as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them. And so Saren and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them from the going down of Beth Haran unto the plain and were slain about 800 men of them. And the residue fled into the land of the Philistines. Then began the fear of Judas and his brothers and an exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them inasmuch as his fame came unto the king and all nations talked of the battles of Judas now when king Antiochus heard these things he was full of indignation wherefore he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm even a very strong army he opened also his treasure and gave his soldiers pay for a year, commanding them to be ready whensoever he should need them. Nevertheless, when he saw that the money of his treasures failed, that the tributes in the countries were small because of the dissension and the plague which he had brought upon the land in taking away the laws which had been of old time. He feared that he should not be able to bear the charges any longer, nor to have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before, for he had abounded above the kings that were before him. All right, y'all, and Antioch is having some financial issues, and now he's in a deep consideration. Verse 31, wherefore, being greatly perplexed in his mind, he determined to go into Persia, there to take the tributes of the countries and to gather much money. So he left Lysias, a nobleman and one of the blood royal to oversee the affairs of the king from the river Euphrates unto the borders of Egypt and to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. Moreover, unto him, the half of his forces and the elephants and he left him half of his forces and the elephants and gave him charge of all things that he would have done as also concerning them as dwelt in Judah and Jerusalem to wit that he should send an army, uh, army against them to destroy and root out the strength of Israel and the remnant of Jerusalem and to take away their memorial 
from that place. So now we have Antiochus Sr., who has left charge to one of his servants, also to raise his child while he goes off to collect more money to pay his armies. Verse 36, and that he should place strangers in all their quarters and divide their land by lot. So the king took the half of his forces that remained and departed from Antioch, his royal city, the 147th year. And having passed the river Euphrates, he went through the high countries. Then Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of Doramines, Nicanor, and Gorgias, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them he sent 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Judah and destroy it as the king commanded. So they went forth with all their power and came and pitched by Emus in the plain country. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. A power also of Syria and of the land of the Philistines joined themselves unto them. All right, family, so this army has come into the perimeter of Israel and the cities of Judah and the surrounding nations have gathered up their wares to come to the battlefield to eventually buy the so-called defeated Israelites as slaves. Now, when Judas and his brethren saw that miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly abolish them. They said one to another, let us, let us restore the decayed fortune of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Then was the congregation gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. Now Jerusalem lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down and aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place and joy was taken from Jacob, and the pipe with the harp ceased. Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Masfa over against Jerusalem, for in Masfa was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day, and put on sackcloth, and cast ashes upon their head, and tore their clothes. Verse 48, and laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They bought also the priest's garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazarites they stirred up who had accomplished their days. Then cried they with a loud voice toward heaven saying, what shall we do with these? And where shall we carry them away? For your sanctuary is trodden down and profaned, and your priests are in heaviness and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. What things they imagine against us, you know. How shall we be able to stand against them except you O oh God be our help then sounded they with trumpets and cried with a loud voice 
And after this, Judas ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands, over hundreds, over fifties, and over tens. But as for such as were building houses, or had betrothed wives, or were planting vineyards, or were fearful, those he commanded that they should return, every man according to his house, according to the law. So the camp removed and pitched upon the south side of Emus. And Judah said, arm yourselves and be valiant men and see that you be in readiness against the morning, that you may fight with these nations that are assembled together against us to destroy us and our sanctuary. For it is better for us to die in battle than to behold the calamities of our people and our sanctuary. Verse 60. Nevertheless, as the will of God is in heaven, so let him do. All right, family. And that was 1 Maccabees chapter 3, where Brother Judas Maccabees is assembling the fearless and valiant warriors of the house of Jacob, where they will now prepare for the battle to save the nation and the holy sanctuary of the great power. And the brothers are now in fasting and praying in humble submission and petition to the holy power of Israel for victory, deliverance, and destiny of the law of the nation. All praises. So family, Lord willing, we shall reconvene and gather in peace and love and joy and warmth and comfort as we absorb and review the holy word of the holy creator. And so family, until we are together again, I love you. I love you. I love you. This is revelations.unveiled.com. Detroit.